we've got to listen to the science. Yet another example of the White House deciding it's smarter, it can do things better. Uh, than the scientists who are trained uh, to do this for a living. Listen to the experts. We need to listen to the science. Okay, which experts? Their experts. You know, the ones that keep, well, they keep contradicting themselves. Now, few seem to flip-flop on the science more than the CDC itself. And yesterday, the agency declared that COVID particles can hang in the air for hours and infect people more than six feet away. Just two weeks ago, they put up and then took down guidance on the exact same topic. So what is it? Now, last month, the CDC reversed its stance that people without COVID symptoms didn't need a test. And in June, the CDC admitted that COVID does not easily spread on services after all of us are freaking out about our FedEx packages and our Amazon packages. They've been telling us otherwise for months. Joining me now is Dr. Amin Oswe, cardiologist and CEO of Fox Hall Cardiology in DC, and also Dr. Harvey Rich, Yale University epidemiology professor. Dr. Oswe, what is the latest reversal on aerosols all about? Well, I think what we've seen is a complete collapse in scientific integrity uh, since COVID started. You know, over 30 uh, articles, peer-reviewed articles have been retracted because of scientific fraud. And as you know, that includes articles in Angel Medicine and uh, The Lancet. Uh, since May of this year, when the CDC clearly showed 14 randomized controlled studies did not show the benefit uh, in non-influenza-like particles, uh, they've done these garbage studies that have been uh, designed really quite fraudulently. It's, it's, a, it's a debacle. It's gonna live long after COVID has gone into oblivion. And Dr. Rich, uh, Dr. Oswe is talking about the study on masks and the compilation of all the studies that were done on masks. But you might as well have committed a war crime if you take off a mask in your own home, as President <coughs> Trump did uh, the other, uh, last night when he came back from Walter Reed. But that is a real problem, is it not? That, that the CDC puts out guidance, then retracts it a few days later. Uh, good evening, Gorham. So the problem is that there's a lot of intangibles and there are not definite answers. There's evidence for and against, and these are not clear-cut things that have clear yes or no answers. And so it's, it's easy to weigh the evidence, think you have one way, and more evidence comes out, and then you go the other way. And the real problem is that all of this is a distraction from how to manage the pandemic that we're in which is that we need to get back to normal life and we need to protect the people who are at the highest risk and we need to be able to treat them if they get sick. And that's the whole bottom line of what we have to do. And meanwhile, we're go doing mass testing, surveillance testing is what's uh, asked for by the Biden people, uh, which uh, we heard last night from all our epidemiologists would be a complete waste of time, uh, wasting resources. Dr. Oswe, uh, former Obama advisor and architect of Obamacare, Zeke Emanuel, says that this is the way to get the death rate down. With the proper institution of the public health measures, wearing a mask, social distancing, no crowds over 20, we could get our death rate way down. And if the president didn't want this to happen, he could have followed uh, his own CDC's guidance or whatever Joe Biden is doing, who seems to be you know, very scrupulously following whatever the government regulate, uh, recommendations are. The flip-flopping government recommendations, Dr. Osby, will that, that any of that actually get the death rate down? Uh, no, I think what's gotten the death rate down, and you simply need to go to Worldometer, is to see uh, the death rates have been dropping since mid-June in most of the United States. I think that there's also something very fundamental that we haven't really discussed, you and I have off, offline, and that is the tr mode of transmission. Tom Jefferson, uh, the Center for Evidence-Based Medicine at Oxford University in England, has published a beautiful brief in July talking about the evidence supporting a predominance of oral fecal spread of this virus. I think it's very important uh, uh, to consider that the predominant mode of transmission may actually be oral fecal. And it has tremendous ramifications on how we do uh, decrease uh, morbidity and mortality from this disease going forward, which is clearly winding down in most of the world and in the United States. And Dr. Rich, um Carl Bernstein uh, yesterday uh, was watching kind of everything unfold with the president leaving Walter Reed and so forth, and he had this to say. We are in the midst uh, of an unprecedented physical and mental presidential health crisis. We're talking about a level about a president 
who is jacked up on steroids. This is a real existential national security crisis. Uh, Dr. Risch, yeah, I mean, you're not treating the president, obviously, but would being on this type of steroid make you manic or a madman, as David Gergen said, that we're being run by a madman because of the treatment? Do you see any indication of that in the president's comments? No, I don't see any evidence of that. I don't know what measure of jacking actually there is, but I didn't see that. <laughs> I mean, Dr. Osquay, you might as well have thought that, I don't know what you think, but the, 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 all of these people seemed so bent out of shape that President Trump took his mask off. They just couldn't, they could not stand it. And, and that was, they might as well have been infected themselves through hundreds of yards of distance and... Uh, in, in, in time. I, did, what your reaction to what you saw last night? This is why I want to retire to Mars. I want to get away from these idiots. No one, no one who's an <laughs> idiot is going to make it to Mars, and that's why I want to retire there. Sooner the better. All right. Well, guys, great to see you tonight, as always. Um, still ahead is Bill de Blasio, the worst.